Psalms chapter 24, the triumphal entry into glory. A Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's. I wonder what's going to happen at the judgments when, when you got landowners. When it says the earth is the Lord's. Now right now, according to Matthew 4 and Luke chapter 4, with the Lord Jesus Christ, it's, it, the power is given to Satan. Because Adam blew it, because David blew it, Abraham blew it, and went to and Noah blew it. But the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, everything. First Corinthians ten twenty six, the world and they that dwell therein, the lost and save are God's. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. The fact is, the God that created you did something for you to attain salvation, and then you rebel against him. Against for Satan. Who is only a, twelfth, a, a temporary being of this earth. Listen, it doesn't take you three seconds to look around the world to realize who is in charge today. But Satan is going to have to give an account to the one that owns it all. For he, God, has formed it upon the seas, founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? How do you get to where the Lord is? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands. Well, forget it. Absolutely forget it. Because the Bible records that all have sinned and come to short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, there is none that seek after God. And a pure heart. Well, the Lord said about David, he had, a, he had a heart that was after the Lord, after God. Heart is motive and is not, notice, is not brain or head or thoughts or ideas. All your true who you are is your heart. Listen, you may be talking as a born-again Christian and then that, that filthy word come out. and Where did that come from? It came from you. It came from your nature. You know, when you're put on the spot and you have the ability to tell the truth or tell a lie and you told a lie, where did that come from? Your heart. Jeremiah says the heart is deceitful above all things. Jeremiah 17, 9. Listen, you're not going to get anywhere with, with a psychiatrist. He's dealing with the wrong part of your body. You know, you can live without, without I mean, a brain as far as knowledge you could be the most stupidest person ever in the world and you're going to live who has not lifted up his soul onto vanity nothing that's what vanity means we're in a time of season right now everything's vanity all around how you spend your money, what you do with you, you know, spend your money for the electric bill, for the lights, and going out buying stuff that you don't need, and then you complain, oh, I ain't got money. Nor sworn, sworn deceitfully. Well, what do you do with divorce? You said I do. What do you do when, when you're a battle and Lord, we get me out of this and. See, man is a sinner. Man without God, there is no hope. Absolutely not. See, God may have and own the earth. We come from the earth. Back in verse 1 again, it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And you go back to Genesis 2, you find out where man came from. He came from the dirt. You are gods. 
The only one that did not come from dirt is the woman. And she came of man. The woman is the man's. The man's is God's. You step out of the order between woman and man and God, and you're in serious trouble. At no point is the woman to oversee the, the man. At no point is, is the man to put the woman a, a, over God. We are all sinners. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. Had Jesus Christ not come yet, had he not been born the virgin birth, had he not died on the cross, had he not uh, been buried, had he not arose from the grave yet, that had never happened yet. It was still prophecy. Those who have died and those who will die would end up still in Abraham's bosom. But there are the Abraham's bosom is gone. Paradise is going up to heaven because of God's righteousness, because of God's salvation in Jesus Christ. All the blood and lambs, goats, and everything like that could not pay. That they just showed to God that they wanted to be obedient to what God wanted them to do, and excuse me, to prepare them. You know, as far as the time of Jesus Christ, when he come, the religious people, you know the Old Testament meant nothing. And it doesn't mean nothing to any majority, I say majority of the Christians today. They don't even know what the feast days of the Bible is, but they can tell you the pagan holidays. They can make believe Jesus Christ's birthday is coming up, and they wouldn't have an idea where what, what could be Possibility with scripture with scripture to know what day he was born. This is a generation of them that seek him. And seek thy face, O Jacob. O Jacob. That's not talking to heathen. I ain't talking to the dogs. That's talking that's talking to that time. That's talking way off in the millennium, in the second advent, as they're looking to Jesus Christ. There's that Selah. Rest. Stop. Remember I told you? Look for the second advent. When you see Selah, it's right there. They're not looking for Jesus Christ today. They're not looking for salvation today. They don't even do the feast of the Lord right. They have a bone that's broken on their plate at Passover. That violates the law of the Passover. That is not today, and that really didn't happen during David's time. David sought the Lord with all his heart. You think Joab did? You think Absalom did? You think Saul did? Solomon did for a while until he kept saying, I do, I do, I do, I do a thousand times. So that passage right there shows you it's second advent. And you go back to verse 3, the hill of the Lord and his holy place. You think that's heaven? Is it talking to you, Jacob? Verse 6. It ain't talking to you, Christian. It ain't talking to you, heathen. It's talking to the literal Jerusalem that's going to be in the millennium, which is going to be a mountain, a hill, the highest place in all the world. Listen, all the earthquakes and all that that's going on in tribulation is going to flatten this planet right out, except for Jerusalem. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Talking about the city gates. That's going to be in the millennium. Read uh, Ezekiel, the last chapters of Ezekiel. They'll tell you about that millennium kingdom, that th there's gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Now, I don't know what it means lifted up there. Uh, rising glory... Are they going to open up like a garage door? Ye everlasting doors, the king of glory shall come in. 
nor is the capital K, and there's no name to that. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. You are looking at the millennium. Here comes Jesus Christ. He's not on a donkey. They're not laying palm leaves down. He's coming in anger. He just came from the second heaven. He's destroying the heathen as he enters into the city with the Jews behind him, finally saying, here's our Messiah. Glory to God, finally. Repenting for what they'd done to him the first time. He ain't the baby. John 5, 23, Philippians 2, 9 through 11, and Revelation 11, 15. Who is the king of glory? That's a good question. The capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Just take a Jehovah Witness and just throw him on the ground and step, step his face in the dirt. Thank you very much. Because that is the Lord Jesus Christ. King of kings, the Bible says in Revelation 19. That is Jesus, Jehovah. Nowhere in the Bible it says Jesus is God and God is Jesus. John 10.30 seems to shut him up every time I, I quote that verse. That is God and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory. What did they say about Jesus when they put him on that cross? The King of the Jews. And they said, Pilate, don't write that. Pilate said, I have written what I have written. Pilate was convinced. He was a wimp, but he was convinced. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah, Yahweh, mighty in battle. Mighty in battle? From what? What's he coming on? What's behind him? There's the battle. There's the army. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, even everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. I kind of wonder how those gates are going to open. I mean, is literally lift up, or is this praising, lifting up the city, following, here's the king. Who is this king of glory, it asks again. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, of hosts. And you run that along, that is the angel of the Lord, that is Jesus Christ, before he was born of the womb. He is the king, capital K, of glory, and there is a sila, there is a second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we finish this song. Oh Lord my God. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My 